In this country, we have huge, huge power stations that make our electricity. The electricity goes down the wires, held up by the big pylons we see all over the country, that take it to local substations, that finally delivers electricity to you and me, at home, at school and at work. The wires, substations and poles that make up the grid are there to make sure there's enough electricity to go around. So when we all want to watch our favourite soap and switch the kettle on for a cup of tea, we have to power up more of our power stations to make sure there's enough electricity for everyone. But in future, we'll have more electrical gadgets, and we might even have an electric car, and the grid simply won't be able to cope. We could build a bigger one, but that will be very expensive, costing billions of pounds. So we've been looking at how we can get more from our electricity network using something called a smart grid. Smart grids will help the power stations to talk to the substations, the substations to talk to homes and businesses, and homes to talk to all of our electrical gadgets, the electric car, fridge, TV and the washing machine. Your electricity company will use this information to understand when and how they can move electricity around so it's there when and where you need it. Magic. A smart house tells the washing machine not to turn on until 3am and tells the aircon to turn off at 11pm and on again at 6am. The smart house will also make electricity using its solar panels, a wind turbine or other green technologies, selling it back to the electricity company when demand is high. The clever electricity company will take this extra energy from all of the solar panels and wind turbines and move it around to make sure everyone has the energy they need. It might also help us reduce the amount of energy we use, bringing our bills down. That is a smart grid. <laughs> well, I hope so.